All right, I know that we left it in the middle um, of the video, the middle of kinetic, co kinetic friction yesterday, um, but I knew you didn't need it for the suggested problems for last night, so I thought it was okay to leave it there rather than to give you more. So going back to complete then, the second type of friction. So static was the friction of two objects at rest with respect to each other. And we said it varies up to a maximum value. And once you hit that max, not exceed it, once you hit it, the object will just begin to move. And as it just begins to move, the static friction disappears and kinetic comes along. And kinetic still obeys exactly the same equation as static, only the coefficient for kinetic is less. And so because the coefficient for kinetic friction is less, as soon as you hit the maximum value that the static friction can have, then it begins to move because it switches to kinetic, and the kinetic, co kinetic friction is less. Okay? Now, kinetic friction um, doesn't depend on surface area and contact. So if you have a book and it's lying flat on the table like this, on its binding, or if it's standing up on its edge, assuming the two surfaces are the same, like the back side of the book and the and the binding of the book are the same, it'll have the same co it's same frictional force. Okay, because nowhere in the equation does the surface area and contact come into play. Doesn't matter how fast you move the book, it'll have the same frictional force because nowhere in the equation does speed come into play. Okay, so what is it that the force of friction is dependent upon? It's dependent upon the Fn, which is directly related to the Fg, and it's dependent upon the, the characteristics of the surface, the how rough, how smooth the surface is. Okay, so that's kinetic friction. The third type of friction is fluid. And if if you are in um, chemistry, or have been, then you probably know that fluid refers to both liquids and gases. And so when we talk about fluid friction, usually we're thinking of air resistance, or maybe water. If you're swimmers, you feel the drag, the resistance that you experience in water. Okay. Now, fluid friction, unfortunately, does not obey the FFR equals mu FN equation. This equation does not apply. And the reason it doesn't apply is, uh, earlier I said the surfaces in contact doesn't matter for kinetic, static, nor does the speed. It does for fluid. Think about sitting in the passenger seat while your friend or your family member is driving down Main Street. Put your hand out the window. So if you put the, your hand out the window like this, you can feel the air. If you put it out like this, it's significantly less resistance. So surface area in contact matters. Now imagine you're still in the passenger seat of the same car, but now you're on the Trans Canada going 110 kilometers per hour, and you put your hand out the window. Clearly, you're going to experience a lot more fluid friction than you are uh, when you're driving down Main Street. So fluid friction depends on surface area and contact and depends upon speed. And because of that, this equation doesn't work. And actually, the only way we'll be able to solve fluid friction will be like if we do a sum of the forces question and we have like some force minus that fluid friction is equal to MA, and if we know everything else, we can solve for it. But we won't be able to solve it with a nice equation like we have for kinetic and static, because for fluid friction, it, it you're going to need calculus. Because as an object falls, just think of dropping an object. As an object falls, FG is acting down, fluid friction is acting up, but the, fat, the further it falls, the more speed it picks up and the bigger fluid friction gets. So it changes depending on speed. It also changes depending on if the object, you know, is spread eagle as they fall or if they're all scrunched in. Changes surface area and contact. Okay? So, uh, and that actually, since I'm here, that leads us to terminal velocity. 
terminal velocity is the velocity that you reach when this fluid friction is equal to fg, right? So when you first start to fall, your speed isn't very big, so your fluid friction isn't very big, so gravity has a bigger effect and you start to speed up, you speed up, but as you speed up, fluid friction gets bigger. And so at some point, the fluid friction will be equal to fg, and when that happens, you fall the rest of the way at constant speed. And that's called the terminal velocity. Okay? And the terminal velocity is different for different objects. It depends on their shape. It depends on, like, if you want to reach terminal velocity quicker, then you fall with your arms and legs spread out as far as possible. It's just like this sheet of paper, right? As it falls, it picks up a lot of fluid friction, but if I crumple it up, it would fall quicker because it wouldn't pick up as much. Okay, so that's fluid friction. Now, you maybe have noticed as I'm going along, when I'm drawing forces, we use something that's called a free body diagram. Well, except for that person that I just drew. And so in a free body diagram, we just draw everything as a box. And then we draw in all the forces acting on that box, okay? So it might be Fn going up, I might be pushing this way, there might be uh, friction acting back. So in a free body diagram, draw in all the forces that are acting on the object. But if it's an elephant, just draw it as a box. If it's a person, draw it as a box. If it's a box, draw it as a box. Okay? So now it's time to do a few examples using all of this. I'm trying to find a sheet of paper I haven't written on. All right, example number one. And if we were in class, I would give you a nice sheet that had this example number one on it. But since we aren't, we'll have to do it like this. So example number one says, you push with a force of 20 newtons on a 10 kilogram box. Okay, so this is example one. And so... Here's my 10 kilogram box, and I'm pushing with a force of 20 newtons. And it's initially at rest on a level surface. If the coefficient of friction between the box and the surface is 0.3, what is the force of friction acting on the object opposing you? So FFR is what you're looking for. Okay? So, we draw in the rest of our forces. This is Fg, this is Fn, and this will be friction going backward. Okay? I lost the... Okay, sorry about that. I just need to pull this out so that... All right, so we know that FFR is equal to mu Fn, so we have to find Fn. So to find Fn, we have to look at the forces in the y direction. So we say F net, or the sum of the forces in the y direction. And that's going to equal MAY. So we're pushing on this box that's sitting on a surface. It's not moving in the y direction. It's not flying up into the air. And it's not sinking into the floor. And then what are the forces that we're going to add? Well, there's Fn going up and there's Fg going down. And so then you have to say, which way am I going to call positive? Usually it's up, so Fn will be positive, Fg will be negative, and this will be equal to zero. So Fn then will equal Fg, and we know from earlier, that F, earlier a few videos ago, that Fg equals Mg. So we can find our Fn, it's just 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And when you multiply those out, you get 98.1 newtons. So now once we have that, now we can find our FFR. FFR is equal to mu Fn. So FFR is equal to 0.3 times 98 point, oops, Fn, 98.1 newtons. When you multiply this out, you get a force of 29.343, excuse me, 43 newtons. Okay? So it's saying that friction is 29.43 newtons, but be careful.